Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm in the mood to do a mill cert video. And this is the Chinese Type 54 Toker F Pistol. Also known as the Black Star Pistol. And if you haven't noticed yet, in the channel avatar there's a pistol. And it's actually one very similar to this. This being an original military surplus Type 54. And the one in the official 2AEDU logo there being a 54-1 which was a consumer model that was available all the way up until 1994 so thought you guys might enjoy that trivia but what I have here today is a genuine original military surplus Chinese model 54 Tokarev and it's chambered in the 762 by 25 which is an awesome little bottleneck pistol round that's military loading is around 85 grains traveling at about 1600 foot per socket so this cartridge is a great little cartridge and has been known to defeat many types of body armor of the past and even some of the current ones that are out there so I'm gonna go through my initial impressions of this pistol these have been recently brought into the country by the importer called our guns and I'm actually really excited about this so we're gonna go through and talk about this Chinese type 54 and I wanted to real quick thank all my patreon supporters those of you that leave me super chats and use my Amazon affiliate link which is down in the description I don't have any corporate sponsors guys no one's paying for these guns or the ammo you guys are an awesome help and if anyone else would like to chip in those links as always are down in the description so the Chinese type 54 Basically, what we have here is a Chinese clone of the original Russian Type 30, which became the TT-33 Tokarev design pistol. This being a clone of the TT-33 Russian Tokarev. And you've probably heard of those before because they're very prolific guns in the com block. Many other countries made these, such as Romania, Poland, Yugoslavia even, China, Russia these guns were used and made by the millions so why am I so excited about this well until very recently the only way you could get an original type 54 military produced as I just said a second ago there were civilian models the 54-1 the 213 and those are great guns however they're still not the real deal if you know what I'm saying right there's just a little bit of differences there especially in the slide markings and other things and China even made one for import in nine millimeter double stack versions those that's probably a topic for another video but until recently the only way you could really get a genuine type 54 Chinese toker of pistol like this was if it was a Vietnam bring back because these did see quite a bit of combat in the Vietnam War as well as many other conflicts and USGIs would capture these as war trophies fill out the appropriate paperwork and bring them back much like a lot of the SKS's that came into the country type 53 Chinese Mosins and other guns that a lot of you or your parents or I guess at this point maybe grandparents brought back from Vietnam shout out to all you younger guys who have grandparents who served in Vietnam and especially to you Vietnam vets who served I have some good friends who served in that war but maybe you saw these there maybe you brought one back maybe one of your friends did but other than that that I know of these weren't really brought in for US collectors and I was actually quite surprised because this pistol and all Chinese pistols and rifles and ammunition were banned by President Clinton back in 1994 executive action sanction and no more are ever going to be allowed to be brought back again unless the current or future president unsigns that executive action which will probably never happen although I wish it would so how do these come into the country and what are they I'm gonna get into both for those of you that like the trivia here's the only way these could have come into the country there's a provision or whatever you want to call it in that sanction that says well the Chinese weapons can come in the United States if they were held in another country for I think it's 20 or 25 years in either case multiple decades and once they've been in the hands of another country for that long they're not considered Chinese for import or sanction purposes which is also another cool thing about this you guys can buy whatever you want I always tell you to do what you want to do on this channel I'm never gonna judge you but I'm not real happy with supporting the Chinese government right now you know probably lots of good people that live in China but the Chinese government not so much right these were not purchased from the Chinese government nor the Chinese police nor the Chinese military and I know that because of the law or executive action I should say 
that I just mentioned a second ago. So these were held in another country for multiple decades because China exported many of their firearms to much of the world. So whoever these were bought from, and I don't know for sure, I'll try to find that out and do a follow-up video later, was definitely not China. So if you buy one of these right now, you are most certainly not supporting the Chinese economy, if that's important to you. So you guys can decide that. But I wanted to get that out there because there's a lot of people out there right now that are like, man, I don't want to buy a Chinese gun because of, you know, China. These did not come from China directly. I can assure you of that. So the Tokarev pistol. I think I'm going to do a Tokarev collection video. And if a few of you guys leave a request down in the comments, you might persuade me to. Going over all the different variants. But basically, the TT-33 was the improved design of the original TT-30 Russian Tokarev. And it served all the way through before World War II, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, through the 80s, 90s, and actually in present day. And parts of the Chinese People's Army still actually carry these, and these are issued today. And they're still made in China, but because of the aforementioned Bill Clinton executive action, can't be exported or imported into the United States, unless neutral country, all that jazz, it gets complicated, right? So... This is basically like many Chinese things. It's a clone of a Soviet block design. And I'm going to show you for reference in just one second a Romanian, which is basically identical to this. So we have a solid steel pistol utilizing a Browning modified action that is very similar to the 1911, no doubt inspired, copied off of the Browning 1911, to be honest with you guys. Feeds from a single stack. 8 round magazine which makes the grip quite narrow and quite comfortable in my opinion. Everything steel on this except for the grips and it features two plastic Bakelite type grips with a black star. Hence one of the names for this pistol is the Chinese black star pistol. The gun's very sturdy, heavy duty, much like you'd expect of a, you know, com block old weapon like this. Everything on it's very tight. The action is pretty smooth. The machining on this pistol is actually really nice. Let me get a little closer here so you guys can see. With this pistol, no doubt, no doubt this pistol has been refinished. If you look at the slide, you can see just a teeny bit of speckling. It's hard for it to pick up. The camera sometimes has a hard time on solid surfaces, but you can see a little bit of speckling underneath more of a flat oxide type finish. Now the finish doesn't look horrible on this, but it doesn't have that deep luster, shiny bluing that the Chinese firearms have and that this pistol no doubt originally had. So this pistol was definitely used in service, maybe China first and then sold to another country, or maybe it was sold new to another country. But either way, this pistol had been in service for decades, probably had some wear and tear on it. Maybe some light speckling of surface rust, which can happen easily on blued firearms, especially the Chinese ones. And it was, you know, lightly restored or refinished. So if you find one of these that was a Vietnam bring back, you'll usually notice that there's little to no finish left whatsoever. And usually some pitting because that's what you see of weapons of that era. So the finish is more of a matte black oxide. It features the post-World War II type serrations these are known as the narrow tokarev serrations and i won't get into it too much but i'll show you guys real quickly a polish tokarev and this would be a circle 11 made in 1952 you see that circle 11 there this has the bluing that i'm talking about that most of these tokarev pistols would originally had and it has the wider rear serrations well, after World War II, Russia and much of the other combat countries went to these narrower rear serrations. So this has more of the modern style serrations, if you will. It has a typical military style sighting system with just a simple front blade sight in the front, which is steel, as well as a steel U-notch in the rear. It is a hammer fired single action pistol. Meaning you have to have the hammer cock to fire around. So we're going to see that it fires right here. 
and is not going to fire. The trigger cannot perform that secondary action of recocking the pistol. Now, if you fired a shot, obviously, the slide would cycle on its own. Okay. Reset. And fire your next shot. It features a rather subdued, rounded magazine release. I'll go ahead and insert the mag right here. On the left side of the pistol, the mag is somewhat drop free, but not always. I'll try it again. It's kind of hard to get all this on camera, guys. Yeah, the mag drops free most of the time. This really isn't the easiest to uh, actuate. It's not bad. But it's very subdued, which is nice because it doesn't snag, but you really kind of have to push. There's no checkering, and it's a very small little round button style magazine release. So there you go. The slide will lock back on an empty chamber. You see the ejection port on the slide right there with the external extractor. And it does have the slide stop release on the left hand side, which actuates quite easily actually. It features a lanyard loop on the bottom of the frame there, which is common for a lot of com block weapons, which a lot of times they did use lanyards as their manual of arms to help keep the pistol retained on the soldier if it was dropped or otherwise during a battle. This particular magazine has a flat base plate, but there's also versions of this magazine for the Chinese Type 54 Tokarevs that has a lanyard loop on the magazine. And I have Tokarevs from other countries that kind of did the same thing. They would kind of go back and forth between having the lanyard loop on the mag or not. But certainly the lanyard loop is right here. Doesn't bother me at all. Doesn't get in my way. I can get a comfortable grip on this pistol. All three support fingers here. The thumb rust easily. Now with this being a hammer fired pistol, I do not have any problems with slide bite guys or hammer bite. I imagine if you choked up enough, but even though there's no beaver tail, just the shape of the frame, the way I naturally want to grab this pistol, my hand just kind of cradles right here, just out of the way of that hammer. Might touch my hand, but not enough to where it hurts or anything like that. The way I hold it, I've never been bit by a Tokarev. Your results may vary and your hands might be huge, so that could obviously affect it too. Now, although this is a very hot round, the 762 by 25 Tokarev round, otherwise known as the 30 Tokarev, basically being a 30 caliber bullet, I find these pistols to be very pleasant to shoot. And I've not shot this one yet. That'll be a follow up video. But there's just something about the action of these pistols, the all steel. I know these weigh over 30 ounces. They're not an extremely heavy pistol, but they're heavy enough and just sturdy enough where they manage to eat recoil, in my opinion, very well. Very pleasant and very fun to shoot. Even though when you shoot this round, the crack that you hear, you know you're sending some you know, terminal ballistics downrange. As far as numbers go, we can see there's a serial number on the left side. Followed by 66. This was made in the factory 66 in China. We know this as the Norinco factory nowadays because that was the name that they used to export to the United States. But back at the inception of these pistols, Norinco wasn't really a thing. It was more of a public company so that they could have a company to legally do trade and commerce with the United States and other countries, of course, before Bill Clinton ended all of it in 94. So we can call this a Norinco, and they do put Norinco on the very subdued import mark, which is all the way down on the bottom of the frame below the recoil spring there, which is a very nice place, by the way, to put the import mark. This is probably the best place you can put it here or under the trigger guard, which I've noticed our guns does one or the other usually, and they're one of the better importers as far as really hiding that import mark. That unfortunately is necessary for US bureaucracy regulations and laws. However, we don't wanna see it. We want the pistol to look as original as possible. Now, here's what makes this also very unique and shows that it is actually a military surplus. The ones that were brought in in the 90s would have the big billboard of info. It would say Chinese Norinco 54-1 caliber, all that good stuff on the side of it. 
and it would have quite the markings, right? Whether you had a 213, a 54-1, as seen in my avatar for the channel. This does not have any of that, but it does have the markings on the top of the slide. And we're going to see right here the three Chinese characters as well as the serial number. And in this case, the serial number does match on my frame and slide. And you can see a little bit of that light speckling there. This is nothing gaudy. It just shows that this was most definitely refinished. And I knew it was right away just due to the more dull matte oxide finish rather than the bluing. But yeah, these are true military slash military police. Chinese Type 54s. All right, a couple other things. There's another import regulation that sucks, but it is what it is. We need to repeal all these gun control laws, guys. For a gun to be imported in the United States, a pistol, a handgun we're talking about here, it has to actually meet what they call a sporting purpose, and there's points. There's things that they add up, like the size of it, the type of trigger it has, all these different things. It has to meet a certain amount of points to come into the United States, which luckily these do. It also has to have some form of mechanical safety. Well, the original Tokarev, the Russian design, the Chinese, all of these, did not include any type of manual safety as we know it. But I'll show you what the safety was in one second. So to bring these into the country, there's two ways that they could do it. They could either drill a hole through the frame and attach a frame-mounted safety that would literally just interfere with the trigger bar. And these do have a 1911 style trigger that pulls straight back. These do not hinge or pivot. They're a straight back trigger pull, which is very nice. Another 1911 type feature on these. Or, in this case, what they chose to do is not to drill a hole in the frame, which I'm very happy about. And I'll show you an example of one of those right now. This is a Romanian. It looks almost identical to the Chinese here, guys. Literally almost identical. I was looking for subtleties. But the only thing I can notice is the profile of the rear U-notch is just a little bit different on the Chinese versus the Romanian. They both have the fine type rear cocking serrations, slightly different shape on the Chinese versus the Romanian. They both have the black stars, but there's some letters on the stars of the Romanian. I'm nitpicking now, guys. You can see this is made in the Cougar factory, which is where all your Wasser AKs come from, if you guys were curious. This one made in 1953. But we're going to notice the manual safety here. And this is the way that many of these for many years were brought into the country. And there's a safety right here. Let me get this on camera. There we go. It's a little hard to actuate, actually. And this would block the trigger. I'll try to do better, guys. There you go. Manual safety actuated. This gun is clear. Very nice trigger pull. But it does have this modified. This did not come from the Cougar factory, okay? This pistol forever is going to have a hole in it. Now, once the pistol comes to the United States, this is up to you. Contact your gunsmith. I don't know. State laws may vary. But as far as federal law, you do not have the safety. So you can take these out afterwards. However, they have to be imported into the USA with the safety. Well, they did this another way. And there were some Yugo imports that came in about a year ago that did the same thing. And they're going with the trigger blade safety. Some were the Glock. Some people call this the trigger dingus. And you can see there's a couple of roll pins here. Where there's a pivoting trigger blade safety. Put this back into single action here. That you have to depress first. Then you can pull the trigger. Now this is great in a way. Because it prevents the pistol from having to be permanently molested with this hole drilled through it. Right? That even if you did want to. At your own risk. You guys are adults. Do what you want. Remove this manual safety. It's going to have a hole that's going to need plugged. Or just have a gaping hole in your pistol, which isn't cool. It doesn't look good. Could let dirt in, etc. Right? So this is awesome. But I don't really like the way they did it. It actually makes it quite sharp because this center portion is solid steel. Not sharp enough to cut you, but sharp enough where it already feels kind of annoying. And I have had, just dry firing this a little bit, a few instances where if you don't hit it just right, it kind of hangs up. It was fine that time. That time I felt a little grit to it. Seems to be breaking in a little bit more. But this has definitely altered the trigger pull where it isn't quite as good as the other Tokarevs that I have. And I'm not going to blame the gun for it or the Chinese, but this trigger safety. 
Now, I'll show you one more thing that this trigger safety is doing. It's altering something here in the trigger pack. And these have removable trigger packs. And to keep this video from going for an hour, even though some of you say you like these long Millsurp videos, I'll show you the insides of it later. But they altered it a little bit with this trigger blade safety. Where I'll show you guys. There we go. There's, there's a spot where it kind of hitched and didn't go the first time, and I had to try again. Now, I'm not pulling the trigger how I normally would. I'm just showing you guys. The blade safety, it wasn't done nearly as nice on these as my Yugo M57s that I have that were brought in, again, about a year ago with this type. But I'd still rather it be this way than a permanent hole drilled. So it's kind of a wash there. A little bit of a knock. I wish they would have done a little better with this blade safety. But it's acceptable. And if I can find one, I'm going to buy an original trigger and swap it out. And then I'll be good because according to federal law, it's totally legal once it comes in the U.S., it just had to be imported with a manual safety. Now, I'll show you the real safety, if you will. And this is what was in the manual of arms when these were carried by troops. So, if the hammer's all the way forward, nothing. Dead trigger, right? Full cock, which is all the way to the rear. You pull the trigger, a round goes off. These have what they call a half cock. Where you just pull the trigger back a little bit. The hammer is now off of the firing pin, where by hitting the hammer, it's not going to hit the firing pin. You also can't pull the trigger. Okay? You go all the way to the rear, it will. So right here, with the hammer being all the way down, you'll notice there's no space there. In theory, in theory, maybe, it could hit the um, hammer, could hit the um, firing pin, even though that wouldn't be likely. But the safest way to carry this is literally right here. It's not much, but watch this. There's no gap. Hear that click? Now there's a gap. Now we have a dead trigger. And you're not going to be able to just push this forward unless something in the gun internally broke, right? Then if you wanted to make the gun ready to fire, you would just continue to pull the hammer back. Put it back in a single action. The round would go off. You'd fire the next shot. And you can see this does fire without a magazine in it. Which leads me to the next thing. Wrecking the slide on this. And I know this has something to do with the safety modification BS law stuff that they have to do. All right. If I cock the hammer back and go to rack the slide, it comes back perfectly fluid. Look at that, guys. Okay. Nice and smooth. Last round hold open. I'm going to go ahead and remove the mag here, which the mag does kind of catch a little bit on this. And while I'm talking about the mag... I'm pretty sure this is not an original Chinese mag. Just looking at the mag, it looks to be too new, as in like brand new. And I think, even though I'm just speculating, guys, this is the initial review. I suspect this might be one of the modern production, cheap Korean mags. Just by looking at a few different signs of it. Don't hold me to it, but I'm almost willing to bet this is probably not an original Chinese mag, okay? All right. Take the mag out so it keep it. Look how smooth this is. All right, I'm gonna show you guys on the Romanian just for reference. Which my Romanian, as with many military surplus firearm magazines, does have numbers on it, okay? There's no numbers on this Chinese mag. Doesn't quite look right for a Chinese mag. I'm gonna make a strong guess this is a modern production, probably Korean, if I had to guess, because those are the cheap ones. All right, so the Romanian. Cock the hammer back. Shiny bluing, by the way, look at that very smooth now I'm gonna pretend I'm firing around trigger so much better without that added trigger safety guys so much better but it does have the annoying hole through it so you guys decide right now check this out I'm gonna hold the trigger down to reset a little bit of extra force to overcome this hammer but still very smooth not too much effort now check this out and this is I believe something that happened during the modification Pretty smooth, right? With the hammer back. Now I'm going to fire a shot. Keep the hammer down. Keeping the trigger down to reset. When I first open this up, I'm like, really? It's broke. There it went. Reset. Pull. Now it's getting a little better the more I did this. And off camera, I probably racked it a hundred times. But you really have to do a push-pull and quickly. So if you get one of these, keep that in mind. Now, I think as it's shot a little bit more, this is going to wear in and break in a little bit more. Don't know if, if it will ever be as smooth as my other Tokarevs, but I know this has something to do with 
this added safety and I'm gonna take this apart more thoroughly and see if maybe I can tune it up a little bit too you know but yeah besides see right there see how I'm really but if I go fast and hard I can overcome it now when you're shooting it the slide is gonna be coming back with way more force and velocity than just dry cycling it by hand right so I think it's gonna be okay shooting it but I'll take it out to the range and probably bring you guys along and at the very least give you guys a follow-up if you're wondering a couple other things to note this barrel would have normally been in the white as seen on this Romanian I believe that this was oxided during the refinishing process oxided blued whatever you want to call it they might have even given this a new barrel I'll look at it a little closer for a follow-up but right off the bat it is chrome line which is the original, you know, military type design. It's definitely chrome line. It does appear it's had some rounds through it. I see a little bit of copper fouling on the on the lands there. So it's either a new barrel that was test fired or a barrel that was refinished. So normally this would be in the white. It's definitely blued. But yeah, other than this trigger safety, which again, it's a catch-22. Do you want a hole in your frame or this trigger blade safety? I want this because I'm not going to be able to replace the frame, but I can, in theory, find a new trigger, swap it out, okay? And then I'll have the gun 100% original. But yeah, it's awesome to have those military markings. Previously, as far as I know, not sold in the United States. Basically just Vietnam bringbacks. Maybe a couple small imports, but nothing really that I know of. And I've been collecting military surplus firearms since 94. Maybe some came in the country in the meantime, but again, not that I know of. These are very affordable right now, especially considering all the current prices. These are available at a couple of the popular um, firearms shops online. Overall, I'm super excited, guys. I love Tokarevs. This is literally the military version of the Type 54-1 that I have in my avatar there. That Narinko brought in the country and until very recently I only had that and now I have an original Chinese now for those of you that stayed along this long I'm gonna show you guys a couple little bonuses all right factory 66 this is also known as triangle 66 in this case there's no triangle but it does bear the factory 66 marking and if you bought a pre-band Chinese AK back in the day you might have heard of the 56-1 S or the 56 s those were Norinco branded made for the USA semi-auto type 56 rifles That would have the triangle 66 and I actually have one today This is not a pre ban although I do have a couple of those if you guys are really interested I might bring those out later, but this is a Chinese type 66 rifle and this is a parts kit build From an original this was originally a military rifle that was converted over to a semi-auto receiver here in the United States. But the trunnion and most of the parts, these are original Chinese. And this famous rifle right here, it's iconic. So many of you have probably seen these. And this Tokara pistol are actually made in the same factory. So I've got a pair of Factory 66 sidearm under folder. Let's see if I can zoom in on the trunnion here and you guys will be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. There's the triangle 66 right there. You're going to see 56-1 Chinese character. Notice there's no S there. This is built off an original 56 military parts kit. And this rifle's a beauty. I really like the Oh yeah. I really like the factory 66 guns as well as the factory 386 which made the polytech legend and many others if i get talking chinese guns we'll be here for like five hours guys but this is one that i really do like and this is a really nice kit build off of an original military factory 66 rifle type 56 rifle and that was the actual designation for this the type 56 so we have the uh, Type 54, my overall opinions is yes. I would get one, I'm very excited too. Look, I'm not affiliated with anybody. You guys can get these if you want to. Again, I bought this with my own money and with generous donations from you all, but 
just like I always say with military surplus pistols, they're here, they're brought into the country now. Will there be more shipments later? Maybe, hopefully, but we can't count on that. And I've been collecting this stuff for a really long time. And this is my passion, these military surplus firearms. And we're not going to get any new ones. We're not going to get any new ones unless pigs fly in one of the president's current or future unsigned Clinton's executive action. These are banned from import. These were in a neutral country. Who knows how many more of these third-party countries have these that they're going to be selling to the U.S. I just don't know. If you guys want one of these, you can look them up. Just look up Type 54 Tokarev, Type 54 Chinese. I'm not going to give a price right now just because the price varies so much and you might be watching this video a year later. And when I do that, people get annoyed and they're like, that's not the price. It's quadruple that now on Gunbroker. I'm like, sorry guys. But for those of you watching now, I'm trying to give you guys the heads up. Here's a couple other cool little bonuses. So here we have an original Chinese Type 54 holster. All leather. Leather and steel design. This is the strap. With the buckle attachment here. As well as a dual magazine holder that would attach to the belt. This one, well used. You can tell this has been there, done that. Like I said, these served in many conflicts, many wars. So, police, military alike. So here's a been there, done that, original Type 54 holster. Now the holster accommodates a magazine here. So you could have a magazine in the pistol, a second on the holster, and third and fourth magazine here. It also included a provision for a cleaning rod, which I do not have one for this pistol yet. But it's going to be very similar to the other TT-33 type Tokarev pistols. But here's what's cool and unique about these Chinese Tokarev holsters. The lining of these is a blue, navy blue corduroy. So check it out. Do you guys remember that? Were any of you guys kids in the 80s? I had some corduroys of this same texture. When you walk down the hall at school, you hear the... <laughs> brings back memories for me. When my mom, God bless her, would take take me school shopping. And this was considered a nice pair of pants back then to to get a pair of corduroys. We used to call them cords for short. Are you guys with me or are you guys going to call me old? You can do that down in the comments. I don't care. But yeah, the Royal Blue Original Chinese holster, which this pistol is going to find itself very comfortable in. Now, it did not come with the holster. Got this on eBay, but yeah, check it out. It's going to look good in there, guys, up against the blue corduroy. And while well, I still have you, you guys have been requesting. We want longer Millsurp videos. Here's actually a brand new, new old stock, Type 54 Chinese holster and magazine pouch. And this is basically the same as the one that I just showed you. Has little leather pulls here. And this is literally new old stock from probably at least the 80s, maybe 90s or older. As far as I can tell, never had a firearm in it and literally brand new. And this also came from a private seller in China. And of course, the blue corduroy. And here's the new leather strap. So these are still available, eBay, you know. Isn't that pretty cool? Does anyone like that? Or I might just be, you know, easily amused. Here's the deal, guys. Ammo shortages, gun shortages. Everyone's so darn stressed out. I'm trying to enjoy the simpler things in life lately. I've literally wanted. True story, guys. True story. I've had the 54-1. The Norinco. You know, I bought one new old stock in the box. There's a picture of the box and the pistol in my avatar. I love it. Love that pistol. Only Chinese Tokarev I've had for, gosh, decades. I've always wanted an original military surplus. Is the trigger blade safety perfect? No. I'm going to get a new trigger for it, though. This will be good. But I've wanted one of these for so long. I was like, you know what? I'm going to save up. And, gosh, five times what I paid for this is what the original Vietnam vet bring back ones go for. And I'd really like to get one of those eventually, but I just haven't had the money. But I did buy these two holsters, you know, thinking that someday I'm going to get me a Type 54 original military contract and I'd have the holsters waiting for them. So 
yeah, I am having fun showing you guys these holsters. And these have been sitting here many years just waiting for until I could either afford or somehow acquire. Or get so big on YouTube, they send me free guns. But they're not sending me free guns. So I was lucky that these came in and were actually affordable. And nobody even sends YouTubers any kind of original Vietnam bring back stuff. That was totally a joke. But yeah, I've wanted one of these for a really long time. A Factory 66. The civilian ones were also made. The ones made for civilian import, the Norinkos. They were also Factory 66, but... I know it comes down to markings and stuff. I get it, guys. But if you're a Millsurp collector, you know what I mean. This actually having the true provenance of being a military collector. And I think it's awesome that this came from a neutral third country that helps me get the pistol that I really like. Because the Chinese did make great firearms for their, you know, for their own militaries and for export to other militaries. But yeah, I'm glad I didn't have to buy this from China. And these are available. And. You guys can think what you want, but I guarantee you, you're not actually buying this from China. Now, here I have a question for you guys that are still here. Which the guys that are still here, those are the ones that I really want your opinion. I've showed you the Romanian. I've got a few of these, okay? Showed you a quick glimpse of this Polish Circle 11. Yugoslavia made like five or six different versions of these if you really get down to it. I have some of those. Do you guys want to see a Tokara video? Tokarev collection video. I have one from Pakistan. Okay. I don't have all the real rare ones, but I have enough where I could put together a little collection video. Would, we, would you guys like to see me go through them all real quick? Or maybe the answer is both. Just, you know, let me know. Or would you guys like to see a Factory 66 video? You know, including this pistol here. This Factory 66 Type 56 rifle. Like I said, I have some more rifles from this factory, both original kit builds as well as some pre-band you know made for us import back before 1989 as well as some other stuff so let me know what are you guys looking for you guys want to see a chinese type video or just a toker of in general or both and i'll get to it as time allows all right well i'm sure i missed something on this pistol i could have told you how it worked in about 30 seconds and done a five minute video on it but i just like to sit and hang out with you guys that's why i do this channel for fun really and i just wanted to explain it all and some of the nuances i'm going to take it out to the range i'll let you guys know how it does if it looks like there's interest in this pistol i'll do a follow-up shooting video and i did have the trigger just hang up a little bit there maybe something needs massaged on the internals maybe i can just source a good trigger to, a new trigger you know just to swap out but I'll figure that out as time goes on. But yeah, huge Tokarov fan. And I'm very happy to add this to my collection. Something I've been wanting for a really, really long time. And I'm happy they didn't drill the hole in the frame, just to be honest with you. But you guys might have an opinion on that. And I can see the argument going either way. These Romanians are nice too. These are available on the market too right now, guys. Okay. And the M57. I wasn't going to bring it out, but this is one of my favorites too. These are also available on the market. This one that had a manual safety that I just removed and I'm waiting to plug. These are still available. These are awesome, guys. I love them. They're a good price. The Yugo M57 Tokarev. Even quite a bit cheaper than the Chinese. Although the Chinese have been much more rare in this country up until now. This might be the only shipment. It might not be. I just don't know. If I was psychic, I'd be rich, but I'm not. So... These have been much, much, much more rare in the U.S. than the Yugos. But I love the Yugo. It holds that additional round in the mag, nine rounds in the mag. It's actually pretty cool. One more thing. This one originally, this Polish, originally did have this frame-outed safety. Here's the Romanian. Here's the Polish. So here's a perfect example of the plug. This one had a plug machine made for it by a gunsmith. Did a pretty good job. But you can still see where it was at. So, you have several options, guys, with Tokarevs. Manual safety, leave it intact. Here's the Yugo. Manual safety, just leave a hole, which I'm not just going to leave a hole. I'm going to plug it. Or, in this case, and in some of the Yugo M57 imports in the past, the blade safety. 
The Chinese ones are only available like this, from what I know of. Our guns is the only one that imported them. But if you look at the alternatives, I think I'll take this and work with it. And I saw something else here on this Yugo. Here's an example of a lanyard loop mag. So, yeah. If I keep going, I'm going to keep finding examples. And we'll have 85 Tokarevs out here and still be talking until midnight, 2 in the morning. All right, guys. Real excited to get this Type 54 Chinese Tokarev 762 by 25. I can't wait to take it to the range and shoot it. And I'll definitely bring you guys along or let you know what happened with it and tell you how it worked. All right. Thanks for watching and have a good one.